What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today's video is gonna be on how to make a Razor MX350 dirt bike run on Milwaukee batteries. All right guys, so like I said, this is a Razor MX350 and we're gonna be making it run on Milwaukee batteries. I've actually had this running on the M18 XC 5 amp hour lithium batteries for about a month now and I've had no problems out of it. Uh, we've got some adapters down here. Um, the point of this video is I'm going to go ahead and redo all the wiring, redo everything, and show you guys how to do it. Um, there's a group on Facebook called Modified Razors. I've seen quite a few people recently asking on how to get these 350s up and running. You know, they pick them up for 50 to 100 bucks with no batteries and want to see how to get some cheap power out of them. So obviously Milwaukee batteries are not cheap, um, but you can use DeWalt, Ryobi, any sort of... 18 volt battery, you know, 20 volt battery, anything like that um, will work. So I'm gonna show you guys how we did it. All right, so we got the bike on the dirt bike stand and up here we have a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna take that out. That way we can get the plastics off. And then right back here, underneath here, you're supposed to have two 10 millimeters, but I just had a zip tie holding it on for temporarily. So now we can pop the plastics off. Set those off to the side. All right guys, so now that we got the plastics off, I'm gonna throw you guys up on a time lapse and show you me taking off all this stuff. That way we can put it back on and go over everything. Uh, so let's get to it. All right guys, so we're gonna go over everything that you need to do this. First off, this is a MX500 controller. Uh, I'll see if you can see the specs here. It is a 36 volt, 30 amp rated controller. We have the positive and negative here, the phase wires here, throttle here, and then this is for your brake. This way, if you brake, it won't allow the motor to spin until you let off the brake again. And then these are the three that we're not gonna use so you don't have to worry about those. These are extended right here by the previous owner. Um, so we're gonna put some heat shrink on this to cover up the solder and everything. It was electrical taped, so we're gonna do that. And then this is a Razer MX500 throttle. So it's an MX500 controller and an MX500 throttle, and we're putting it on the MX350 bike. So we have that. And then the last thing I have here is a battery voltage meter. Got this on Amazon for, I think, $12. So that was pretty cheap, works really well. I'll show you guys how to wire this in as well. And then we right here, we have the M18 Milwaukee battery adapters. So I have these tied down with uh, four little Allen bolts here and then some lock nuts on the underneath. Uh, just drilled some holes in the stock battery tray and folded them down. And I'll show you here. So Milwaukee batteries will just slide right in. And then pull it right back out. So let's go over the full install and show you how guys how to set. This. All right, guys. So I forgot to mention in the last clip, you can get a MX500 controller and a MX500 twist throttle on eBay. I think it's thirty-five dollars or twenty-five dollars. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well as I will leave a link for the battery capacity and voltage meter. And I will also leave a link for the batteries adapt the battery adapters I used on Amazon. So you guys will have links to everything to do this and it should be rather smooth. So let's get to it. All right guys, so first thing, I apologize if you can hear the guy moving rocks in the background across the street. Really unfortunate timing to do this. But anyway, so you have a set screw right here. It is a, oh, let's see, what is it? It is a three Allen, number three. So you're gonna loosen this set screw. You're gonna put your throttle on. You're gonna put the cap that goes on the inside of your throttle. Put that on, and then we are gonna put the razor grip on. So we'll slide that all the way on first, that way we know where to set our throttle. Okay, so then we're gonna push our throttle against that, and then go ahead and tighten that set screw. Wherever, once you get this where you'd like it, so get a good feel for it. Right here looks like a good spot. set up, got the 
throttle on and we are going to run the throttle wire through this area here on the front plate and we're just going to pull it all the way through for now and let it hang all right guys so now we're going to go ahead and mount the controller we are going to use the stock controller location but as you can see here well maybe you can see uh, this bracket is a little bit shorter than the two holes on the controller so we are just going to use zip ties and run them through each hole here and then run it through each hole on the controller on the sides and mount it up once you got that one started go ahead and start the other one before you tighten it all the way so we we'll get this other one started all right and now so you get the controller kind of centered up here just push it up here and then don't tighten one all the way immediately. Just pull it snug and then do the same thing with the other one. So now our controller is mounted and we have the wires hanging down underneath here. So now we are going to get to the wiring. Now that we have all the controller set up and our throttle and brake on, we have our two wires. I'm going to take these and wrap them around this top tube up here just for wire and cable management, I guess. Um, looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. So I'm going to cut back to the video once I have that done and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So to give you guys a better look, this is what I was talking about. Have it all wrapped up. Now we just have to plug them in. There, that one's good and this one's good. Well, now it is. All right, and then this one, this is the brake connector. Here's where it's at on the controller, just so you guys know. It is the first, the negative for it is the first wire next to the positive coming off of the controller. Now we are gonna take our motor wire and zip tie it here and zip tie it here. That way we can connect. All right, so we have our motor wire zip tied. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. There's only one way that this connector plugs in, so it should be rather simple, plug and play. All right guys, so let's try this again. So I'm gonna show you guys where everything needs to go and then I'm gonna cut off, do it, and then I'll cut back and show you guys how it's all hooked up. So we have the negative to positive from our two adapters that will give us our series. Um, so we'll keep the same amp hours and we'll double the voltage. So it'll be 18, 18, 36. And then we are going to connect our positive on the controller to the positive on one adapter and then the negative on the controller to the negative on the other adapter. As well as if you want to run a LCD screen, you need to take your red wire and your black wire and connect them properly. So the red one to the red controller wire and the black one to the black controller wire. So I'll hook this all up and then I'll cut back and show you guys how it's all set up. Alright guys, so now that we got it all wired up, you can see we have our positive to positive as well as our positive on our battery cable for the display right here. And then we have our negative to positive for our series and then our negative to negative and then the negative on our battery display. So let's make sure everything works. Let's go ahead and put one battery on. You shouldn't hear a click or anything, but then when you connect the second one, you should. There it was. And also, I forgot to mention, this is just a safety motor. So this is not a MX500 motor, this is just a, the 350. So, okay, looks like we got power. And then you can't spin the motor when you're squeezing the brake. That is because of this cable that we set up. So, all right, let's finish up the wire. All right guys, and to mount the battery display, I'm just gonna keep it real simple. I'm just going to mount it here on this front bar. So, maybe you guys right here, you can see a little bit better. So, I just put a couple zip ties around the actual thing itself. You can see just around the sides. There's two little clips on the sides here. So, I'm going to make sure it's facing to where I can read the voltage laying off the side of the bike. And then I'm going to run a zip tie through the top. Run it through the side of the bike. And slide this up. I just like to keep it in the center usually. Works fine. I'm gonna figure out a place in the plastic to mount this. So then we'll cut that. Run the wire into the back side here. I 
All right, so let's make sure we have power to that. Let's plug in our batteries again. Okay, so looks like right now we are at 86%. If we can zoom in and see that here. 88%, 88% or so. And then also 40.1 volts. And then off, then back on for the display. So we know our display works, so that's good. All right guys, so now we should have everything wired up and working. And so we are going to throw our plastics back on. Make sure that it all slides in properly. Put our 10 mil back in. There we go. All right guys, now that we got everything wired up, we can put our batteries on. There's one. And there it is too. So these are the five amp hour batteries. So this is 36 volts at five amp hours. Let's put the kickstand up, see if she rips. Perfect. All right, let's go take it for a spin. All right guys, thanks for watching. The next video we'll do a speed run test, see how fast we can get it on these Milwaukee batteries and see what else we can do with it. If uh, you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you had any questions, leave them down in the comments. Everything that I listed in the video, I'm gonna make sure that I leave links for it in the description, except for the bike, obviously. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you next time.